Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop and it's repair time again and this time we've got something a little bit different. No, it's not a digital oscilloscope, it's a fish finder for mounting boats uh, with a sonar detector in order to find schools of fish. Now this one belongs to my dad actually and he's reported that the screen has just gone blank when you power it up. So let's take a look at it. So obviously got a nice big LCD and a bunch of buttons down the side and on the rear of the unit is the connections. Uh, they've got power here, just runs off at of 12 volts and you've got some connections here to temperature sensors, the actual sonar detector, etc. Now it is a little bit dirty so we'll give it a little bit of a clean up before I, I tear it apart. But first we'll put power into it and I'll show you what's wrong with it. Okay, so I've got 12 volts coming in the back, so let me just power it up, press the button there. And yes, that button is illuminated, it's just very hard to see. Now it looks like the display is blank, however, if I put it at the right angle, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it does actually have some data and some messages etc on the screen. So let me just see if you can get this at the right angle so you can see. I don't know if you can see that. I can't see anything on the camcorder display but certainly with my own eyes there's a nice big message there or there was and some data down that left hand side there. So obviously the back lighting's failed. So let me go and give it a quick clean up and I'll tear it apart and let's see if we can affect the repair. Well, here we are inside the unit, and yes, it's jam-packed full. Uh, we've got the connections up onto the back panel there, straight from these connectors around the edge of the board. We've got some anti-vibration uh, to stop these loose wires rattling against on the inside of the unit. And we've got one large PCB, obviously the processor board, then a steel plate. And then under that I can see the LCD itself and down here we've got a PCB for the push buttons as well. And looks like there's a little daughter board down here. I'm uh, not sure what that's for, it has got some writing on it but we'll get to that later. So let me just take some photographs and then I'll disconnect the wiring and we can flip it over and remove the PCB. Before I remove the PCB I did notice there's a rather nice weather seal right round the edge here for mating the two halves together and it looks like it's working well because this PCB looks as good as the day it was put in. It's absolutely bone dry, no signs of any corrosion given the environment this unit's used in. Plenty of water, plenty of salt and all that and it just looks as clean as a whistle. And looks like I can't remove these foam pads because they are glued down so I'll just leave them in place for the time being. Looks like we've got some FETs up at this end of the board here and rather curiously, let me zoom in here, the tab on this one is very very close to that can there so I think I'll just push that away and uh, you know it could be that that's a regulator or that that tab's tied to ground somewhere and uh, there's no problem but let's not take any chances and let's just bend these a little bit away make some clearance between that can and that TO220 there. Now in terms of the back lighting well it's either LED or it's HV and there is a little bit of a giveaway and that's down here those connectors there are usually used on HV type backlighting and given that the, the location of this little uh, protective can here I would say this is an HV backlight and this is the high voltage. Yeah, I can see some coils I think down through the holes in that uh, protective cover there. Hopefully the actual backlight's okay and hopefully there's just a, a simple problem with maybe the drive electronics there. 
Well, I managed to remove the board and the large plate and I got down to the actual LCD itself. And looking at the part number there, it's an 8 inch display, 800 by 480 pixels, quite high resolution for the size. And also notice here, this is not a, like a little daughter board as such, it's an SD card slot uh, from the front of the unit there. And looking at the data sheet for this actual LCD, it's a CCFL, a cold cathode fluorescent tube, basically, type of backlighting there. So, therefore, the voltage here is probably around about a thousand volts on here, and around about seven milliamps, something like that, according to the data sheet. Now, looking at the back of the board, it looks like somebody's been in here before, because these are the solder tabs for removing that. Uh, can around the high voltage section and it's got flux round about it so not really sure what's going on there but maybe there's a clue because on the back of the actual LCD it's got like a, a sticker that shows that the unit's been modified uh, somewhat by some separate company something to do with the LCD or the back lighting so not really sure what's going on there but let's uh, desolder the can and get access to the electronics underneath. Okay, there's the can removed and I've got the connector removed as well. And let's take a look at this here. What you've got is a large coil here, basically a primary and a secondary with a large amount of windings on that secondary here in order to generate that high voltage output. And there is a primary side there with just a few turns and it looks like that's connected to a couple of SO8 package uh, transistors. Probably a push-pull on that primary there and those in turn are driven from a TPS 68000. It's a dedicated full bridge CCFL controller IC and you've got a large FET, I'm presuming that's there. You've got a power supply uh, looks like that's coming in over here and over here we've got an 8L05A I think that's just a 5 volt regulator because you've got 12 volts I think coming in from the rest of the board there so first things first is the coil intact well that's an easy check now over on this side we've got seven connections and over at that side we've got four connections so the primary is going to be over at this side here and looking at it Pins 2 and 4 look like they've got a little wee bit of wire wound around the pin which I'm sure are probably the ends of that primary winding. So let me just go down onto those two pins there and measure that. Yeah, 0.04. That's going to be a very, very short primary winding. The secondary is not across those two ends there from what I can see. It's across this first pin over here and this pin here and we've got 1k so yes you've got a large ratio there of turns that's going to give us the high voltage looks like that coil's intact now the next thing i want to do is i'm going to power it up again and let's probe around carefully and see if we can see if that 5 volts intact or indeed 12 volts is getting through and we'll take a look at the supply to that TPS 68000 IC. Okay, there we go, ready for power up. Now what I have done, I've verified that the zero volts on that TPS 68000 is actually shared with the zero volts on the main board, so I can connect my ground there. Now I can double check that, I'll go into these capacitors here. Yeah, that's ground. That's ground. And if I go into one of the pins on this TPS IC, pin 22, so this is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And you can see that it is grounded as well. So I'm good to use that as my ground reference. So let's get back to voltage mode, DC, and let's put power back on. Reach under, turn it on. There we go. And we're getting 11 and a half volts across that one. This one here, I'm getting 11 and a half volts as well. So they're probably commoned up. 
Now onto this 5 volt IC. Let's go into the pins of the IC itself. Let's try pin 1. Ah, there we go. 5 volt supply. So we're getting a good supply of TPS 68000. Let's see if the enable pin is actually high according to the data sheet is on. And we're getting, yep, 3.2. I think the logic to this TPS IC is 3.3 volt logic. So 3.2, that's okay. Now here's the data sheet for the TPS IC and you can see a common hookup for it. You can see the IC itself. There's the actual CCFL tube itself. There's the primary and secondary on that uh, transformer there and there's the push pull arrangement uh, that is shown in the data sheet for driving that primary side there and over here is all the control signals you can see the supply voltage is 8 to 30 volts not 5 volts Okay, I've been probing in and around this TPS IC and most of the signals on the input side for control and brightness, duty cycle, all look reasonable. One pin, however, caught my attention and it's this pin here, pin 16. If I just go on to it, it's at zero volts, it's low. Now that's an output and looking at the data sheet, here it is here, an error output, any detected malfunction of the, of the application will be reported as an error on this pin. Error means the output is pulled low, so the IC is in an error state. Now that could be for any amount of reasons. It could be that the output isn't working properly in such a way that this feedback line here coming back to the IC is not detecting what it thinks it should be. When the uh, CCFL is an on state. Okay, the next test is I've got a test CCFL tube here, a nice little strip. This is good for 750 volts, this one. I know this is going to be putting out about a thousand, so we should be okay. I don't know what startup voltage this tube can withstand, but we'll give it a bash anyway. So that's it hooked up. So I've extended some of the pads on that socket there and disconnected, obviously, the backlight. And let's power it up and see if this works. And that'll prove if the IC or any of the surrounding circuitry is faulty. So external power supplies on I've just got to reach in under and turn it on and see what happens aha well it's working so let's have a look at the fault pin it's open drain so not sure what voltage we'll get and it's at 5.7 volts so it's no longer low so the circuit's working and as you can see hopefully anyway the tube has now got to full brightness after being on for a few seconds and it's working fine well, it was always going to be the fluorescent tube that had failed on a device like this. Uh, it's not normally the driver, it's usually the tube. Um, so the only way forward is to try and replace it. Okay, so I've removed the board and the plate again. And I think I'll dig a bit deeper and try and remove the actual tube or the LCD from the housing. Now it is sealed in right the way around so I think I'm going to have to disassemble it in place by bending all these little tabs here to try and lift out the plastic part there where the CCFL tube is buried and leave in the metal surround by the looks of it. So let me go away and do that now. Well that's the tube removed from the assembly and I did actually find a replacement tube on eBay. Had to import it, but it's the right size, right dimensions, etc. So let's go and fit the new one. Well, here's the replacement tube here, and yes, it's exactly the same size, even got the same connector on the end, so direct replacement. So I'll go ahead and change it over now, and I'll come back when I've got it reassembled. Well, that's it all back together. Just pushing in the last cables now. And I think I'm ready for a power up. I've got a minimal amount of cables connected to the main board uh, just to see if it's working. Turn on the external power supply, 12 volts. 
and let's hit the power button. Yes! Loading! That backlight's working. Yes! Wow, it's a nice clear LCD. Transistor not connected, that's because I don't have the uh, external sensors connected. But yes, it's working. And you can see the sonar image now scanning down there. Although it's not going to get much with no sensor connected. But at the end of the day, the LCD is working. Brilliant. Well, there's it all buttoned back up. And that's interesting. It's in demo mode when you don't have the transducers connected. That's why I'm getting an image on the sonar readout there and also some of the other data. This is all false data, so yep. Yeah. <laughs> and we're certainly not off the coast of Miami, that's for sure. Well, I quite enjoyed uh, repairing this unit. That's it all back up and running. I'll go back into my dad's boat and hopefully I'll make good use of it again. Now, it was only a tube that was knackered but I do enjoy going through the motions of troubleshooting uh, from getting into the unit and checking in and around and not going actually direct to the fault. It was always going to be the tube, if the truth be told, but I like investigating up front, working out how it works, uh, looking at that control I see in the back there that interfaces with the fluorescent tube and working out how that worked. So if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Thanks for watching.